Now we're going to move on to our cliff face here, okay? And for that we want a dark, a dark color. So I'm going to take our palette knife and I'm going to take some of our burnt umber here. We'll just pop that over there. And I'm going to take some of our ultramarine blue, mix that in, and just a touch of lizard and crimson. And when I mix these three together, we, we should really get almost a black color. Okay, so you can see it's gone pretty dark there already. Um, mixing those together. Okay. That's almost a black there now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread that out on the um, on the uh, palette with my knife, and then I'm just going to cut across so we've got a big chunk of it on our palette knife like so. And I'm going to come up here and just roughly, I'm just going to drag it in to mass in the shape here. Okay. Now you don't want straight edges on this top edge here. You want to get a bit of variety in there. Okay. Now this is the dark, which is the underpainting. And over the top of that we'll put some highlights, but this creates the shadows between the cracks in the rocks and so on. So if you're wondering why it's so dark, that's the reason. This is just where we're starting, not where we're finishing. Get a bit more of that paint there. And apply it like so. Okay. Now notice my edge along the top there is quite jagged. Um, it's not very uniform, which is what we want. And then I've got my reflection here as well, so I need to get this down into the reflection. Now one of the tricks is we want to just scrape off any of this excess paint, so it's quite a thin uh, layer of paint there. And that's okay because then we can use that down in the reflection like so. Okay, but the key here is we do want it to be quite thin because we're going to put other paint over the top of it. Okay, pop that down into the reflection area. So I'm just sort of scraping off any excess and then using that for down the bottom here. Okay, so the water line is going to be around about here obviously and we'll put some sand and things in to demonstrate the water line there um, as we go. Now, what we want to do, I'll just demonstrate this to you and we'll repeat this process shortly. We need our big brush this is how we're going to start working on the reflections here, right? Need a big brush, clean it off, and where that waterline would be, we just place our big brush against it there, and just drag it down. And that begins to start that reflective look. Okay. And we'll keep playing around with that. Now, I'm not sure whether that's how that's coming up on the uh, video for you right now, but it'll become obvious. Um, as we get going a bit further here. But I'm just dragging that down into where the wet area would be. Okay. Now we need to get some highlight colors on there. And we need a couple of different variations of the highlight colors. We don't just want one highlight color. Um, so we want some of this burnt sienna. We'll pop that over there. And we want some yellow ochre. And we probably want something that's in between those two as well. So I'll just mix up a little half tone between those two. And always start with your darks. Okay. So I've got this darker color here, mainly burnt sienna. And what I'm going to do is just start to fashion in some rocks here. Now I'm going to have to just lift this canvas up just a little bit, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, but we want to get this right. So just some different rocky shapes here. Now it's always easier of course if you've got a photo reference for something like this rather than just making it up which is what basically what I'm doing here now. 
just making up what this rocket looked like. You would find it so much easier with a good photo or, you know, part of the reason why we go out and paint on location. Okay. Like so. And then I'm just going to apply just a few little touches of that in to the reflective area. Notice I'm not trying to get a mirror perfect image. You don't really need to um, because the mind doesn't do necessarily a direct comparison. Um, you know, when it looks at the reflections, it makes its own assumptions about the reflections. It's always good to get it closely approximating things, but you don't have to get it perfect is what I'm saying. Now I'm going into that sort of second value, which is a bit lighter in color. And I'm going to start to uh, just add in a few lighter colors here. Just for some variety. Okay, and we'll just get a few of those into the reflective area. Notice that's just just that little bit lighter. Okay, and then finally we want to get in some highlight colours, which is really our yellow ochre. Um, I'll just pick up some of that on our palette knife here. This is really only going to go along the edges, so I'll just, uh, where the sunlight might be hitting, we'll just get in some of that yellow ochre, and maybe if there's a rock ledge along there. And I can use that small little edge of the um, palette knife as well and uh, just pick up these edges here. And then again, we want to obviously get that highlight color in to the water here, the reflection. A bit like so. Okay. Now, um, I'll show you how we did that dragging this down before. We'll just come back here and do it again, picking where our waterline will be, and just, and you can see with those different colors there now, how that blurs them all in, which is what, you know, sort of a reflection would really look like. It's gonna be kind of blurred like that. So um, when we put in some water and things, that's gonna to start to look like uh, a reflection, and we'll put some, you know, highlights of the water and so on over there and that'll all start to come together quite nicely. Okay.